You'll want to settle down for this. You don't want to miss a minute of it, I'm telling you. We are in for such a treat today to have as our speaker, Reverend Temple Hayes. This is a quote from Reverend Temple. Right now is the greatest moment we have ever lived. This moment creates our future. Isn't that powerful? Temple Hayes is a spiritual leader, author, and international motivational speaker. Reverend Hayes is an ordained Unity minister and currently CEO at First Unity Campus, a New Thought Center in St. Petersburg, Florida. And that campus transcends religious denominations, embraces all ethnicities, and reaches beyond national borders. Temple is currently serving on the leadership team of the Association of Global New Thought, a wonderful organization that our own Reverend Howard Caesar founded, along with some other people. She is a successful radio host on Unity FM with her show, The Intentional Spirit, Seeing and Being with Reverend Temple Hayes, and reaches people throughout the world. She is the author of The Right to Be You and How to Speak Unity, which we are familiar with. We've used that book a lot here. And all, her newest book, the best title ever, When Did You Die? <laughs> Eight Steps to Stop Dying Every Day. And that's where she'll be speaking some great wisdom from this today. And yeah, and start waking up. That's what it's about. It's, a best, it's on the way to becoming a bestseller, and it, it is in the making that will, it, this will be propelling Temple into the media spotlight as a global spiritual leader that she already truly is. She is also the founder of Life Rights, a 501c3 dedicated to education, teaching, and supporting the awareness of valuing life in all things, creating a world longing for peace. I know that is deep in your heart. So that's the bio, and I just want to share briefly, I don't want to cut into her time, but I want to tell you a little bit about my experience of this amazing woman of God. I had the chance to speak and sing at First Unity Campus at St. Petersburg in March. And let me tell you that that community, that church is alive. Everywhere you go, there is a restaurant there. They have um, pet adoptions on Sunday. They have a bookstore with a full coffee bar. Somebody take notes, I mean, really. <laughs> They have a yoga studio. They have, um, let's see, a thrift store. And every, every corner of that place is alive and energetic. And people are having their lives transformed. And you know why? Because their leader carries that kind of aliveness and transformational possibility. I'm happy to call her a new friend, but a friend. I, we were just talking. We've got to get some stuff on the calendar because we, we recognize a, tribal, a tribe member in each other. We, so... Um, you are in for such a treat. Please give her a great Unity Houston welcome, Temple Hayes. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I called Carolyn Miller yesterday, your executive director, and I said, I've got a crush on this place. I just got excited and got God bumped because I was so excited to be with you again. Give yourself a great big hand. Thank you. So a woman is leaving her home. She's headed out from her house, and she's in a hurry and quite busy, and she's just green, green. The lights are green on the other side of the hill. You know, she's really wanting to get where she's going. I think my mic disconnected from me. No? Well, I'll just start again. How's that? I'll come over here. Okay. New start, we're live on the air. Okay, so a woman, she leaves her house, she's in her car. She's in such a hurry, you know, singing green, green, the lights are green. She's just really got to get where she is. She's looking at her watch, got to get there. And all of a sudden, she comes up upon a traffic light. Well, this man in front of her is just like going in slow motion. He has the rest of the day, you know, that kind of driver. And so, you know, the light's just barely turning yellow where she cannot believe it when he just comes to a complete stop. And she's like, oh my gosh, and she just kind of lays on her horn. Why didn't you go? Why didn't you go? Then she puts her arm out the window and starts doing sign language of some kind. 
and just keeps on and on and on. And the guy's just like, oh, my gosh, you know. And so by this time, the police officer kind of noticed what she was doing. And so he turned on his light and followed her a little bit and asked her to pull over. And he said, ma'am, I need your, you know, your driver's license. And he said, and your registration. And he says, you know what? I need you to come down to the station with me. And so he carries her to the station, and she's there two or three hours. All of a sudden, he comes and he gets her. He says, ma'am, you're, you know, you're free to go now. And she said, well, you know, officer, I've never realized exactly what I've done. And he said, well, you know, try to think of it from my point of view. You know, I see on the back of your car, you have global oneness, a big old bumper sticker. You know, honk if you love Jesus. You know, I go to unity, you know. I, I do diksha, you know, oneness blessings. World peace, you know, love your neighbor. And he said, there's all these bumper stickers on your car. And he said, ma'am, I just thought your car was stolen. <laughs> Well, you know, a lot of people's lives today are stolen. A lot of people are living life today according to someone else's standards, according to someone else's beliefs, according to what their parents said, according to what their school teacher told them they could or could not do. A lot of people are are stolen from a life of who they could be in their own authenticity of how powerful and energetic and healthy and joyful and how wealthy and all abundant living that they could be because they've allowed ideas and concepts and old limitations to steal them from who they were really born to be. Do you relate to anybody that way? People are in jobs today they don't want to be in. They're in marriages that are real tired that need to be invigorated again. They're going through life just through the motion, somewhat on automatic pilot, not modeling to the kids of coming up today of that life is meant to be joyful, that though we will face challenges and problems because we're in a human suit, our problems are not here to take away from us. They're here to take us into the place that we came here to be in the first place. Do you connect with that? How has your life today been stolen? There's a great quote that says that successful people seek counsel. Unsuccessful people believe opinions. Which are you? Successful people seek counsel. Unsuccessful people believe opinions. I was born in a little small town in Anderson, South Carolina. Big hearts, but small minds. I wasn't, I didn't become a, a metaphysical person because I went to Unity at 20. I was born metaphysical in a southern, deep southern rooted community. From the very beginning, I pushed people's buttons, not even meaning to do so. I was what we would call a, a rebel, not meaning to do so, because I wanted to know why a few of us in the world could have our own religiosity and be right, and the whole rest of the world could be wrong. That did not ever make sense to me at all. And my experience in life just got better. At 13 and a half, my first relationship was with a woman. And then I went on to be an alcoholism. Spiritually, I was so different from anybody in Anderson, South Carolina. Probably still am the most... <laughs> different person from Anderson, South Carolina. And my grandmother brought me in to tell me that she was sorry when I was 14 that she wasn't going to get to spend time in heaven with me because she was going and I would not be going. I mean, at 14, you're thinking about your first car, okay? Not what you're going to do 
when you died. And I died a little that day, energetically speaking. I died a little in those moments. I remember as a kid, I'd love to put together jigsaw puzzles. Actually, I still do on iPad. But I'd put together a puzzle, and often relatives, we'd all be seated there putting together the puzzle, and we'd get down towards the end of a section, and we'd start looking for the pieces, and sometimes we couldn't find them. And we'd go back to the image on the box, you know, and we'd go, oh, it's got red in it. Are you sure it's got red in it? Oh, yeah, because it, you know, it's on the box. Look, it's, there's the color there. And we would argue that all the pieces were there in that box. It never occurred to us that one of them was missing. You know what I mean? We never doubted that manufacturer of that, that puzzle, the, the puzzle company. And the same is true with us. The same is true with you, and the same is true with me. That at the moment of our birth, we had all the pieces that we needed in order for our soul to do what it came here to do and be. And we have all the pieces. We have a manufacturer called God. We have a manufacturer called infinity. So, you know, if you out there still have the same problem you've had for six months, my teachers used to tell me you must still want it because life is infinite and we have all the pieces that we need in order to step into another level of our lives. So last year when the book was coming out, I sought counsel from a psychic that I've been calling once a year for about 10 years. And more often than not, the timing may be off, but lots of times she's spot on. And she said to me, she said, you know, she said, there's a grandmother coming through. And I said, oh, that's my grandmother, Ruby. You know, she comes, she's come up frequently. She said, oh, no, this is somebody else. And I said, my grandmother, Lois? She's been, she died in 1994. And she said, yeah, that's who it is. Uh, she's saying she's your father's mother. And I went, that's Lois, my Southern Baptist grandmother. <laughs> she said to tell you that you were right, that spiritually you were right all along. And she's sorry. She's sorry about the things she said or, or didn't say to you. And I felt that. But I must say, because of my involvement in New Thought and Unity and being surrounded by people that have accepted me just as I am for so much of my life, it wasn't like the largest defining moment of my life. But it, you know what? At that moment, I must say, I felt happier for her than I did for myself. Because at that point in my life, I knew I was okay. But I started telling my literary agent about it. I said, gosh, you, you know, this happened, and my grandmother showed up, and, and she started saying I was right and everything, and then all of a sudden it occurred to me, and I went, wait a minute. She knows that I'm going to be putting her in my new book. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it is, yeah. She's manipulating me from the other side because she's a Southern woman and she does not want her stories to be told. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. Go Grandma Lois. And you eventually, you go back to these moments of life and you, you thank them. You thank them because they developed you. They developed you. The people that even deny you show you ways that you have denied yourself. And they are some of the best people you could ever have in your lives. I love the story of the naturalist. The naturalist, who, he goes to a chicken farm, and he sees the farmer tending to all the chicken, and he looks around, and there's an eagle. And he goes to the farmer, and he says, Sir, you know, aren't you aware you have an eagle in the midst of all these chickens? The farmer says, Well, you know, him just eat like a chicken, and he walks like a chicken, so to me, he's, he's a chicken. 
And the naturalist says, oh, no, no, no. He's, he's an eagle. He was sent. I mean, he, he's majestic. He's powerful. He can fly above all. He's an eagle. Can I take him out? Can I take him out over the side of the mountain and see what he'll do? And the farmer says, sure, go for it. And so he takes him out and he says, you're an eagle. And the eagle begins to flap its wings, and begins to go, and he looks back. He looks back at where he's been. He looks back at his conditions. And he jumps down and he goes back and he joins the chickens. But the naturalist can't get it off his mind, so he goes again. He asks the farmer again. He takes the eagle out to the side of the mountain. You are an eagle. And he begins to flap his wings, flap his wings, flap his And there he goes. He didn't look back. You know, every week in a unity community or religious science community somewhere in the world or on Super Soul Sunday with our girl Oprah. It's the same message. You're an eagle. You're an eagle. You're here to fly your wings beyond your wildest imagination. But so often, once we get an inkling of change, or we get an inkling of the new, or we get an inkling of what we think we could step into, we look back. We, we want to go back. Our fear takes us right back to a place that we're already familiar with, of something we've been doing time and time and time again. So it's necessary to wake up. It's necessary to, to come back alive and ask yourself, how's it been working for you? Are you excited about your life? Are you excited about your life? <laughs> How excited are you about your life? Give yourself a standing ovation. Give yourself a standing ovation. Be excited about your life. God created you in God's image and likeness. Get off your seat and be excited about your life. The energy of God right now, of anything that's possible, turn around and tell somebody, no wonder you're excited about your life. <laughs> you, you begin to learn that as excited as you are about your life is equally as excited as life is going to be about you. You get what you bring. If you're wanting romance in your life, show romance on your face. You know, it's the look. <laughs> if you're wanting energy in your life, be energetic. Step into that place of energy that is a container of infinite spirit that awaits you. You get what you bring. If you want your children to be happy and prosperous and successful, be it. Be the model that you want to see them have. And even when the worst of times knock on their door, show them as you're grounded in your own awareness of what you know the principles will work in your life, do not waver. Don't meet them at their level. Have them meet them, you, at your level. That's the shift. You see, that's the wake-up call. I love the navigating system. It's so much fun in your in your cars. I've had so much fun with Steven Krugler. You know, he was the youth ed director at my community for seven years before he just came here. Let me tell you, Steven Krugler, you have found a wonderful youth and family minister director. Let's give him a hand. And he is a blessing. But we got out, we were exploring Houston yesterday, and we yelped everywhere we went. You know, oh, well, where's an antique store? Well, where's this? And yep, just tells you all that, and it has this wonderful way of giving you directions. 
And automobiles do that. We love it. We enter in the direction of where we want to go, where we want to arrive, and it tells us play by play, go left, you turn everywhere. But if you've been in the car with people that they actually doubt what the navigation system's telling them, <laughs> they'll go, uh, something about turning left here doesn't feel quite right. And I'll say to them, really? Um, well, have you been here before? No, but just something about it doesn't feel right. And so I'll say to them, well, you know, here's the thing. You can't get upset with the navigation system if you don't listen to what it says. So if we wind up somewhere else, don't be upset. Well, with all of us as individuals, as spiritual beings immersed in the law of life, we have within us our own navigation system. It's our GPS. It's our God-personalized system. And it tells us all the time that inner guidance of which way to go, of what people to choose in our lives, of the addictions that it's time, long time for us to let go of, of the things that do not represent us for our highest and best. You know, often you get that hit on Sunday, right? You know, oh, I got to go home and I got to give this up this week, right? Yes? Right, uh-huh. It's, it's that system. But it's important for us to listen to it because that's the universe telling us how to align our soul for the best on our path. And we, we've got to stop getting upset with God. It's not God's fault. We're the ones that have left home. We've got to stop feeling disconnected and drained from the creator of our lives because it zaps the energy out of our bodies and it makes us old long before our time. Yes, it makes us old. You know, when you look at energy and you ask me, you know, tell me about this thing called energy. If you, if you want me to, I will. Thank you. Thank you. So here's the thing about, about energy is that there's no such thing as being old. That's made up. Okay? We're here to age, but we're not here to be old. Old is a mindset. It's a limited belief. It allows your life to be stolen for the next 30 or 40 years. People that start saying they're old at 50, get over yourself. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You're just getting started. You're like a birthing baby. It's just all starting to make sense energetically. And so there's no such thing as being old. There's young people that are old. You see young people now, they're old. They don't even have an expression on their face. Why? Because they're surrounded with other people that aren't expressing that they're excited about their lives. Being old is made up stuff, so we'll buy all these extra products and everything. And it's not necessary. Energy comes from God. I live on St. Petersburg, St. Pete Beach, and I love to watch the birds. I've never seen a worn out egret. <laughs> it's so hard being a bird. Somebody took my fish, <laughs> and I have to walk up and down the beach every day. No, the egret is. I am immersed in the infinite energy of God. The other illusion of energy is somehow we've been convinced that we have to manufacture it. It's not our job to manufacture energy. Energy comes from the universe, which is plentiful, and there's more than enough. It is our job to maintain it, but we don't produce it. Do you, do you know what I mean by that? Because people start saying, oh, I only had so much sleep, and I, you know, I had to work on the kids, and I had to go run these errands, and it, they just zap their energy right out of their body. You know, they're just worn out and fall over by the time they get home, <laughs> right? But that's not the way that energy works. The more you give energy out, guess what? The more you have. The more you have, for sure. Never changes. It's always the same. I fly uh, out of town a lot, and I can be on a plane on Monday and listen to the people around me talk about how tired they're going to be on Friday. Oh, I mean, it's Monday morning. They haven't even started. Oh, on Friday, I'm just going to be worn out. 
that's not living. That's allowing your life to be stolen. Because one of the greatest privileges of being a spiritual being is to see how much energy God can give you. And it just gets to be more and more and more and more beyond your wildest imagination. I'll be 57 next week, so I'm 12. 5 plus 7 equals 12. <laughs> All right? Energy sustains and comes through and to you. I'm reminded of the, the beggar at the, at the gate that he goes and he sees outside the king's palace that they're going to have a celebration. They're going to have a wonderful time. And the beggar, he looks at his old rags he's wearing, and, and he goes up and he says to the attendant there, the guard, he says, I'd love to come to the banquet, but I don't have the clothes. And I'd love to see the king and ask him if he would put me in something so I could come. And so the attendant says, wait just a minute. And he takes the beggar to the king and he looks at the king and he says, sire, I really would like to come to this banquet, but I don't have the right clothing. And the king says, You're, this is your day. My son wears, looks like he wears about the same size as you. Go back there and tell my son, I said to suit you in royal attire. And so he does. And he just looks so wonderful in his new outfit, and he's just shining and beaming. And then he looks back at his old rags, and he looks back at them, and he goes over and he, he picks them up, and he puts them in a bag, and he has them, and when he goes to dinner, he takes them and he holds his old rags. Even though he has his new clothing, he's, he's clinging tight to them. And every day as he would go up and down the streets of his city, he would just haul these old rags around everywhere he would go. And rather than being known as the man with all the riches, he was known as the man who toted the rags. It, it's a defining moment for many of us on this spiritual path. It's a defining moment in the great wake-up call in our spirituality. Are we toting our riches? Or are we toting the things that have never worked in the first place? Are we toting counsel or are we toting opinions? My sixth grade teacher told me I was never going to amount to anything because I talk too much. <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Don't believe the opinions in your life. And anyone you ever decide to listen to, make sure they're living the life you want to model. Yeah. Yeah. I'll close with uh, one of my favorite stories is this woman, she was coming from Tampa to Houston. And so she, before boarding, she wanted to go get herself a pack of cookies and she had her boarding pass. And so she goes and she sits in a seat where no one is, you know, we always look for that, you know. So she's seated there all by herself, and then a moment a guy comes and sits like right up next to her. He smiles at her real big, and she smiles back somewhat shyly. And all of a sudden, she started hearing noise, like her cookies were being opened. <laughs> and so he holds them up, he looks at her and smiles, and actually gestures to her and asks her if she wants one. Well, she couldn't believe it. I mean, what kind of person would do that? Well, he was. And then he proceeded to take another cookie, and he kind of smiled at her as he was eating it. She was getting very irritated. And do you know that he had the audacity that he held a cookie up, broke it in half, and asked her if she wanted half of it? She couldn't believe it, so she just got up. She was so angry. Well, by this time, they announced her group was to board the plane. And so she reached into her purse to get her boarding pass. And when she felt down in her purse, guess what she found? She found her cookies. Those were not her cookies that he had. They were, they were her. 
Excuse me, they were his. Thank you. They were his. Does that ever happen to you? You think somebody has your cookies and they don't? <laughs> you think somebody wants your cookies and they're, they were never interested in the first place? Your soul has a journey. Your soul has a place that only you can go. You, simply you. No one can take your path away from you. No one can take your good away from you. No one can take your blessings away from you. No one can ever take your energy away from you. No one can take your health away from you. And no one can take your vibrancy from you. By the grace of God, by someone that deeply understands dying and living and being reborn many times, don't let anybody steal your life. Thank you for the honor and privilege of having me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.